Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video explaining all about adding a GPS and compass onto your multi-rotor. Now this is the thing that I built in my quadcopter building for beginner series. I'll put a link down below. It's running beta flight 4.4 point something and I have added a GPS and also wired up the compass actually to give me some extra stuff and you might have noticed it if you've been watching particularly things like the Walksnell 4k video that I did a week or two ago. Now, there's a number of distinct advantages adding a GPS and that gives you some extra bits that you can turn on inside Betaflight. If you add a GPS and a compass module and your multi-rotor is running iNav or Audi Pilot, then you get an awful lot more in terms of the extra stuff you can do. So why would you add a GPS? Let's start there. Well, you don't have to. I add a GPS because some of these multi-rotors are flying uh, test equipment on. That might be one of only five or six units in the world that's been shipped to me to have a play with. Definitely don't want to lose that. But for general flying, if you put a action camera on top of this, that might be two or three hundred pounds worth of action camera. The quad itself is a couple of hundred pounds. Then you have a 60 pound battery. The Walksnail unit's 150 pounds. It starts to add up really quickly. You don't want to lose a multi-rotor. I've lost one in the past, and that's why I now, whenever it's got expensive stuff, or I don't want to lose it, I add a GPS. And that's because the big advantage of adding a GPS, even onto a beta flight quad now, as of beta flight 4.4, the GPS rescue mode actually works reliably. Before, in my humble opinion, I think the GPS rescue mode was pretty trash. As of beta flight 4.4, I'm actually happy to put GPS units and rely on them to get this thing back if something horrible goes wrong. And that's the main thing. There is something called the GPS rescue mode. You can either have it set so that if a failsafe happens, the thing is going to rise to a predetermined height. It's going to fly back to you in a very wobbly, drunk kind of way, but it will fly back to you. Get over the location it's stored as a home location. That's typically the first place that you armed it. And then it will descend, land and disarm. And again, if you have lots of very expensive equipment on a quad like this, that's going to stop your day being ruined. There are some other benefits as well. You get an extra flight mode, GPS rescue, but you also get additional elements that you can add into the on-screen display. You can add not only how many satellite locks it's got, which is kind of interesting to know because typically you need um, eight minimum or more for a good lock, but also things like your distance and direction to home. That's great if you're flying in an unfamiliar location, but also I really like to have my height displayed to make sure that I don't go over the legal flying height wherever I am and it also shows you your ground speed which can be fun to see how fast you're actually going. Now this is just for beta flight that we're talking about here however if this multi-rotor was running something like iNav or Audi Pilot, putting a GPS and a compass on the back would mean that we not only get those benefits, but we'd also get the ability to park the model in 3D space. So you can just kind of have it hovering sat there, but it can also do things like fly autonomous missions where you can upload a series of waypoints and it will fly those. Betaflight doesn't support that stuff, but it's still, in my humble opinion, worthwhile adding a 30 pound GPS so you don't lose a three or 400 pound action camera. Now, one of the things you might notice when you start looking at GPS units on your favorite radio control shop of choice is that some of them have four wires, some of them have six. The big difference is those that have six will have an inbuilt compass. Beta flight at the moment doesn't need a compass in order for the GPS rescue mode to work. However, if you are going to be using iNav or RD Pilot, then you need those extra two wires. And those extra two wires are the ones that you would connect up and to enable the external compass. Now there is a bit more work in order to set the compass up. And that's why Betaflight at the moment kind of stays away from the whole compass thing. It can be interfered with with stray magnetic fields and Betaflight uses um, a slightly odd way of calculating the heading. If you have a compass, you know exactly which way the multi-rotor is pointing. If you don't have a compass, you have to fly for a bit and then figure out from where you were to where you are now, which direction you're pointing in. That's fine. It doesn't work very well in high winds, which is why things like iNav and RD Pilot also like to have a compass installed as well. So let's talk about how you actually install the GPS unit. Now I'm going to put a Matek 
unit into the back of this particular multi-rotor. I've just 3D printed the case for it. There was a case that came with this SpeedyB model. However, I could have just, you know, kind of hot glued the GPS compass unit on top or used some double-sided foam tape or even a cable tie. But I just made this 3D printed version because it's just a bit neater and it's going to keep it all nice and safe. So how are we going to fit that GPS compass unit into the flight controller itself? Now we have it attached to the back of the quad. Well, the first thing we need to do is have a look at the documentation for the flight controller that we're using to see where they recommend you need to solder on the wires from the GPS and the compass. I'm going to attach the compass on this because I'll probably try it with iNav as well at some future point. However, I will enable the compass in beta flight for the testing. I can see here that it's going to connect to UART6, TX and RX6. So that means that UART6 is the one we can configure in beta flight in a moment. I can also see where the two wires from the compass are supposed to connect as well. So I will myself connect those up here. So what I'm going to do is take the top off the quad and I'm going to pre-tin those pads that I need to. I'm going to collect the plus five volts to the 4.5 volts pin, the ground wire to the ground pin, the transmit pin on the GPS to the receive pin on the flight controller and vice versa. And I'm going to wire up the SDL and SCA lines to their corresponding pads on the flight controller as well. And again, that's just for those compass pieces. That isn't necessary for beta flight. So with the GPS and the optional compass physically connected onto the flight controller, let me show you what you need to do inside a beta flight to turn on all the goodness. So let's connect to this quad and I'll go through all the different settings that we need. Now up here we can see that the GPS is showing as connected and we're showing that we have a 3D lock. And that means that we can now fly around and when we arm the quad that arming position will be stored as our home location. But let's turn on expert mode. There's a couple of things we need to do. First thing we need to do is we need to now enable the port that the GPS is connected to for GPS by selecting GPS for the UART, UART6 that we've wired those wires onto from the GPS unit. Again, if we are using a compass, we could enable the compass on here. However, in beta flight, I wouldn't bother. However, iNav and RD Pilot, I absolutely would. But as we're working with beta flight, we'll just stick with this. Next thing we need to do then is go into the configuration tab. We need to tell Beta Flight that we want to use the GPS. So we need to make sure that the GPS is turned on in here. And then that also allows us to change the settings. The protocol is most probably going to be U blocks. Uh, GPSs come in different varieties. The most modern GPS and compass units that you get these days are going to talk U blocks. Older ones will talk something called NMEA. I've got a couple of old ones that still have that, but support is starting to be dropped. So, for example, iNav doesn't support that anymore. I would leave it U blocks, leave it at auto config. And then I would click use Galileo. The auto config, the, what this does is that the flight controller will talk to the GPS. In the old days, you had to connect the GPS up using an FTDI adapter and manually set the board and the settings and the bit rate and all that jazz. You don't have to do any of that. You just turn on auto config and beta flight will automatically configure the GPS. The Galileo stuff, if you click on this little bit here, it'll talk you about that. Um, Galileo is a different system, so it gives you more satellites to have a go at. I would turn that on. The last thing here is use or set home point once. Again, I would turn this on. This means that when you arm the model, the location that it's at when you arm the model is going to be stored as the home location. That is the one that the model will fly back to for something like GPS rescue. Ground assistance type, I'd leave it to auto detect. That just then will figure it all out. If you set it up like that, there's a very good chance it's going to work first time. Once you have all that set up and you reboot, then the GPS needs to appear in the top. And as we've just seen in the main screen, you want to be looking at the GPS lock being true. 
Next bits then we're going to change. Fail safe. Now by default, fail safe is set to drop. However, I would set it for now GPS rescue. Now we have a GPS installed. However, there's all these different things that you can set. Let's go through them very quickly. The angle is the max angle that the quadcopter can fly at. 45 degrees is the default. I'll probably leave it at that because that is probably going to be enough for most quads to be able to get back home. If you're going to be flying in very windy conditions where the quadcopter is going to have to be tilted over more than 45 degrees, you could increase this to 50-55. But most of the stuff that I've done here, 45 has always worked. The next one then is initial altitude in meters. This is the height that the quadcopter is going to rise to before it comes back to you. Have this set, be, be aware that it's in meters, have this set that it is going to be significantly higher than the largest trees and things that are going to be around you. So for example, if the largest trees around you are gonna be 30 meters high, I would set this to 40 or 45. Keep in mind there's a legal ceiling in lots of different places. 30 is kind of the default, and that's not a bad number to go with. Descent distance in meters. This is the distance from home where the drone will start to descend. I would leave that at default. Minimum distance from home in meters. This is one of the few at the moment that has this help. This is the minimum distance from home when rescue mode is allowed. Um, beta flight 4.4, I think it's 20 meters with two, two meter altitude is the minimum. I've set it very slightly closer in because sometimes I'm going to be flying in smaller areas. Ground speed. This is how quickly it's going to fly back to you. I personally would say that maybe 8 to 15 meters per second is a nice number. Uh, this is how quickly, once it's risen to this height, it's going to come back. Again, it really depends on the quad, how much power. Uh, I think this is the default, but I would probably bump it up to 8 or 9 personally. The throttle minimum and throttle maximum are the minimum and maximum throttles it's going to use while it executes the maneuver. By default, I would leave them where they are. Hover throttle is an interesting one. Now, you need to know the value of the throttle when the multi-rotor is hovering. If this is set too high, then when you enable GPS rescue mode or it fail safes, the quad is going to surge into the air very quickly. If you have it set too low, then it's going to drop dramatically. Personally, the way I do it, I hover the quad and make a note of where the throttle needs to be on the radio, then plug it into the computer, put the throttle control at that same position, go into the receiver tab and see what that throttle value is. Just read it off here. Once I know that, then I can come back into this and I can set it. By default, it's about 1250, which is a quarter throttle. This quadcopter has a typical amount of power for kind of a regular uh, hobby grade quad. So mine is actually 1236. It's really important that you get that right. If you're flicking into the GPS rescue mode and it's either going straight up or straight down this is the thing that you need to change then you have the ascend rate this is uh, how quickly it's going to rise and fall i just leave that as default initially then we have the minimum number of satellites uh, eight is the default i just leave it at that there's this bit here this is quite a dangerous bit allow arming without a fix by default it's turned off and i would leave it turned off that stops you from accidentally being able to take off and fly without having the home location stored. It will take a little bit of time for the GPS to get a lock the first time out of the field, but once you have that lock, every time you plug in the battery from there on in, it's a warm GPS start, it'll be pretty quick. I would not turn this on unless you are having a severe problem with the GPS stuff and you are quite happy that you are not going to be using the GPS rescue either for fail safe or as a mode. Maximum altitude. This determines the altitude at which the quad is going to return home at. You can either have the current altitude, fixed or maximum altitude. I would be tempted to set at fixed altitude. And the last bit then is sanity checks. This is another one of those bits that catch people out. When this is turned on, it checks that the GPS rescue mode 
is actually possible. And that means that the GPS is connected, that there's a good 3D fix. It's at least 100 meters away from home by default, uh, closer to home, um, and you haven't hit anything. Betaflight Wiki recommends setting this sanity check to fail safe only. Uh, I would leave it like that. So that is how you set that up. The big one in here for me, I would make sure that your hover throttle is set correctly. Otherwise, when the initiate the mode or fail safe happens, it's going to immediately jump into the air and you'll start panicking or it will slam into the ground, both of which are not great. The other thing now we also have is if we go into mode, you will find that there is a new mode called GPS Rescue and you can select that as a mode and I have it set here on my three positions. So I've got at the moment just for this quad angle at horizon and I've also got GPS rescue. So I by flicking into this mode should have the quadcopter rise to that 30 meter height initially and then fly back to me and then land and disarm at the home location. And again I won't be able to arm the quad until I have that 3D fix and that might take a minute or two initially for the first flight of the day. So as well as having an additional flight mode, additional options for failsafe, we can also then add some extra things into the screen. So for example, I like to see how many satellites I have locked. Once Betaflight has got enough satellites to be able to take off, the beeper will trill to let you know that that's the situation, similar to what iNav does. I've also got my distance and direction to home arrow. Uh, these are again fantastic for those situations where you're flying across field or in a place that you're not familiar with. You're loving, enjoying looking at the scenery and then you lose orientation and not sure which is the way back to home. This will absolutely tell you. I have this on all of my GPS enabled bits. And the other things as well, we get the altitude because the GPS altitude can be read and we also have our ground speed. And that can be quite fun to see how high we're actually flying and at what speed we're covering the ground. So those are the things in beta flight that you would check and change in order to take full advantage of adding the GPS. So hopefully that's been useful. A GPS is a very handy thing to add onto a multi-rotor, particularly one that you've got things like action cameras and stuff on. It's great to know that in the event of a failsafe, it's going to fly back to you, or you have a flight mode that you can flick into that's going to bring it back in case the FPV has a problem or something goes wrong. But you also get those additional goodies via the on-screen display. Distance and direction to home, height and ground speed are also nice to have too. Stay tuned to let me know if you're interested in me flashing this thing with something like iNav and going through the GPS and compass setup with that as well. Having the compass at an angle does mean that there is an extra step or two that you have to do before you do calibration. But if you're just interested in beta flight and that basic GPS rescue mode, trying to get this little sucker back. And again, don't worry if you test it and it flies like, like somebody that's had a drink or two too many. That's just how it's trying to keep track of its heading because it doesn't have a compass and that's perfectly normal. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.